You're listening to Podcast PXN, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. Let's do this. What's up, guys? Welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 119. I am one of your hosts, Daniel Prindle, a.k.a. Dan is DTM on Twitter, and I'm joined over Discord by the Nintendo aficionado, Roshan at Roro, the host of Large Popcorn and Video Essayist, Christian Macias at ISO Christian, and the Canadian Spartan Gage at Gilbo Biggins. Welcome, everyone. Only 301 episodes until episode 420. <laughs> Hell yeah. <What? laughs> Let's go. Bro, you surprise me. I like it. You're going like to get it. me shut down, Ro. That's illegal here. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't even smoke. <laughs> Thank you to everyone joining us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube. Just search podcast PXN and you will find us there as well as twitch.tv slash podcast PXN and Twitter as well. The topic of the show this week, guys, is our game of the year 2021 discussion. But first, the show always starts with the PXN news of the week. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first item, well, our quick bites are obviously first, guys. Uh, quick bites. Boba Fett is now in Fortnite. What the heck? It actually looks really good. Uh, this literally just completes that every single character in Marvel slash Disney's repertoire is on Fortnite now, pretty much. <laughs> He he wasn't he in in oh no that was the Mandalorian I'm sorry that was Mandalorian sorry, yeah that was the Mandalorian excuse me yes. but yeah this is awesome is he is he in it or is he a, is he a skin uh I th- he's just a skin so okay. you can purchase him as awesome. a skin uh, even better yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so it's another skin you can buy and then not play Fortnite <laughs> <laughs> wait I don't understand is there a difference between a character and a skin yeah sometimes they're like. Hasn't there been characters that are just like uh, NPCs yeah. before, and you can't can't buy, play as them? Yes, I, I was just wondering if, if uh, he was an NPC. Interesting. Again. Yes, yes. I I am Fortnite illiterate at this point. It's been too long <laughs> since I played. So, yeah. Yes, I, unfortunately, me as well. I guess how you look at it, unfortunately or fortunately, I, I am as well uh, anymore. But used to play it a lot. Uh, guys, the next quick bite, I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, I saw this on my feed. Um, uh, there's a cool, small little look at a game being made by, uh, uh, by this little indie developer named Team Clout, and it is called Ill, and it looks super freaking cool. I thought it was, uh, worth sharing here. They have a little, uh, teaser video on their Twitter account, uh, which is at Team Clout Studio, if you want to look it up, uh, it's looking like like a, a survival horror type atmosphere, like Resident Evil type game, and it just looks so gritty and and spooky, and uh, I love it. It looks really good. Uh, Unreal Engine Five they're using, uh, and this is still very early in development, and they've even gotten uh, crowdfunding involved because they're such a small studio, just trying to, I guess, put out an awesome game. So, I thought this was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you showed this because I totally missed it. And I love seeing Unreal Engine 5, like, working with actual demos beyond, like, the Matrix stuff was awesome. Like, I loved uh, going around there and just messing around with the settings here. But seeing it in action, like, in an actual game, oh, man, I can't wait. Next gen gaming, baby. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, this is a little out of my interest because it is a horror game. But... I got to say, like, the the walking animation, even though it's in first person, you could it's a lot more realistic than this, like, static first-person camera. He's, like, kind of swaying side to side as he walks. It looks, it looks really good. So maybe I will be interested in when this comes up. Uh, who knows when that'll be. Obviously, it's perfectly right. very early in development, but it looks really good. We're slowly going to turn Ro into a oh, no. survival horror fan. Oh, no. There's a lot of good <laughs> stuff, man. There's so much good stuff. Yes. This looks good. I'm excited to try this when it comes out. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Our last quick bite, guys. There is a rumor that every suit in the upcoming Spider-Man PS5 game will have a symbiote version of the suit attached to each one. I thought this was kind of cool. The source here is uh, Optical Cinema, which I'm not sure who they are, but that's the source. Uh, And 
I just think that that idea sounds really cool. Uh, essentially, like doubling the amount of suits that you'll get in Spider-Man, I'm assuming, because if you have a version of every single suit, that's super cool. And I'm very interested to see how they incorporate Venom in, uh, in, in the sequel, see what happens. Do you guys think we'll get to play as Venom? If you had a bet right now. I bet no. Surely. I'm, th- I'm thinking maybe yes. Mm. Especially if there's suits in the game uh, for it. I'm thinking maybe like there's like a sequence where something something happens. I don't know. I think it would be cool. I'll go yes as well. I'll go yes. I'm going to say no. Insomniac, but I, 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 I really hope wow. so. <laughs> I really hope so. If anybody would do it, it's Insomniac, which is exactly yeah. what I'm thinking with this story. Like if anybody were to just give the extra, go the extra mile just to make fans happy with extra suits like insomniac would totally do that so i can definitely see the suits being true i don't know if venom is going to be playable though but that would be so sick listen the the venom moments in ultimate spider-man already fantastic you know let's bring it back bring it back for spider-man 2 insomniac bring it back bring it back uh our first item on the news guys Remedy and Tencent uh, are apparently partnering to, to develop a co-op multiplayer game codenamed Vanguard. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be in development alongside Alan Wake 2, which is interesting. Uh, apparently, this game will be developed with the Unreal Engine for both PC and consoles. And while Remedy will develop and publish the game for most of the world, Tencent will localize it for selected Asian markets um, and will cover any localization costs. Uh, it's currently a proof of concept phase and the game's development budget up to the first year of live operations will be in the range of a typical Remedy AAA game budget. My question to you guys, are you guys interested in a Remedy project that is multiplayer? Uh, I know Remedy has a, pretty much a deep history in single player, more action focused uh, games in, in that realm. So uh, I was kind of curious what your guys' thoughts were. Uh, Christian, if you want to start, uh, what, what, what do you think of this Remedy team up here? I'll try anything Remedy does. Like that team is so like unique and unafraid of just trying things even if they don't always work like for example um alan wake i i was really enjoying most of what that game was doing but i found the gameplay just a bit too uh a bit too old for, for my taste at this point like it's kind of an older game so i ended up just uh like going uh diving deep into like reading uh everything online about all, all like all the manuscripts um and then seeing some of the twilight zone spin-off shows uh, that they had in game and then watching the cutscenes that way i didn't have to actually play it but i still got all the story especially after control um yeah i'll, I'll try if, if, like uh, by reading just that article saying that they want to uh, like intermix multiplayer with like their narrative stuff like that sure why not that seems awesome we we see like narrative and multiplayer games mix all the time we saw it this year one game of the year with it takes two so yeah i'm excited bro are you excited yeah uh, I am. I'm. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I like Christian. I, I do. I haven't seen. I haven't played Alan Wake yet, but I really enjoyed the creative stuff they did, that they've done. Like Quantum Break is the one that obviously comes to mind for me with their how they incorporated TV and the actual game. And I know it didn't work for a lot of people, but it did work for me. I, I really did enjoy that game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what they they bring to this sort of space. Uh, they make really fun games, at least the ones that I've played. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see what they bring to the. Uh, cooperative uh, scene as well and I'm glad that it's not like it's not PvP I'm glad that it is like a, a cooperative type of multiplayer uh, otherwise I may not be as excited as I am but PvE I'm definitely down to see what they do with that okay. Gage yeah the PvE part's got me really excited because I'm definitely a, a co-op guy um, and we're having we're having a bit of a resurgence to that right now there's a lot of uh, four player PvE co-op games that are really popular right now and um yeah, I have yet to play Control. I tried to play Alan Wake, same issue as Christian. Very dated, feels very dated. Um, the story was really interesting, though. Um, and uh, I did play a little bit of Quantum Break, and it was good. I really do like them as a team. They are uh, they are very talented, and I'm excited to see what they do. Um, I think a PvE four-player co-op game is probably the one that would get me like most on board with a, a Remedy game, so this is probably something that I will be... Uh, picking up cool uh 
I totally agree with all of you guys. And like, Ro, you're totally right. Like, I don't think Quantum Break gets enough credit because I, I feel like the TV stuff that they put in there was absolutely great. And that was kind of in the weird period where Microsoft was doing their TV, TV, TV stuff yeah. and pushing that. But it was actually, I thought, pretty well implemented. Um, and they actually got like real actors to play in those those parts. So, uh, yeah, like you guys, I'm I'm totally excited as well. Yeah, Christian. Two two questions. One, um, I want to play Quantum Break as well. I would love to play it. How do you access the TV stuff? Is it through the game? Yes, you can. Okay. So, so as you progress, uh, I think it's right at the end of the chapters, right, Ro? Is that right? Yeah, I think at the end of each chapter, there's like an episode that plays that leads into the next chapter of gameplay. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. It's, it's obviously been a while since I yeah. played it, but I think that's that's how it goes. Got it. Thank you. Second question. How do you guys feel about Tencent like buying everything? <laughs> not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah, not, a fan. not great. There's this tweet by uh, Daniel Ahmad uh, that I was like just digging up stuff when I when Dan put this in here. It's like, oh, I want to know more about what, what like Tencent was buying this year. Uh, and his tweet reads, Tencent has acquired or invested in more than 100 video game related companies this year. That's essentially one every three days. Insane. It yeah. is. I, 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 I really don't like it at all. Um, hmm. I wish I wish more places would talk about it, but I think Tencent or uh, yeah, it's 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 really tough. It would be a good that would be a good topic of the show if we were to have a discussion about um, where we draw the line and stuff like that. Because yeah, there's there's a there's a a pretty serious connection between Tencent, the Chinese government, and um, some of the like really regressive laws that they have there is making its way into video games like we all heard a couple was a couple years back when they were uh what was it putting limits on like time limits for Mm -hmm. uh, kids playing games and then more recently there is um they actually passed it into law that uh effeminate men whatever that means uh are banned from media so anything like that if you read if you actually read the memo they sent it's ridiculous it was something there's a line in there where it's like if a, if a person's gender is not immediately identifiable, it should be um, counted as uh, problematic and censored. And so these are the people that are like investing in all this stuff. So it's like, yeah. ugh, I don't want that. That's that's please. No, I'm a fan. Yeah, and I feel like this all started like 10 cents, like started to get so big when they they put a uh minority stake or i can't remember if it's majority or minority stake in epic games right before they right before fortnite like blew up they they uh acquired a decent portion of epic games 40 percent yes okay yeah so like when that took off obviously they got a ton of money up from that i'm sure from from you know epic games increasing in value so that's unfortunate that uh that probably like kind of stemmed their interest into video games and kind of uh started this trend of them buying so many studios or so many you know majority stakes of studios which is never a good thing that one company owns all this stuff but not good so uh, this next one came from Christian, and I thought this was actually super interesting. I was like, what the heck is going on here? Uh, apparently, a scientist uh, is talking about starting a Twitch channel for his rats that he has trained to play Doom. What? <laughs> like, what the heck happened here? Uh, so it turns, I'm reading now from Destructoid, uh, Noel Warner uh, posted this. Um, any relation to Roe here? Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, apparently, he, uh, it turns out he was actually just curious to learn more about brain-computer interfaces and thought this might be a good way to test them out. But still, it's pretty hilarious that this is how he chose to go about it. His setup includes a large ball made out of a material called polystyrene, a plastic that's often used in food packaging. To play Doom, the rats were placed on top of the sphere where they could use the pressure from their feet to move around the game's map while also being fitted into a harness so they don't fall off. Finally, the rats had a little tube in front of them that would dispense treats when they did something right. <laughs> what the heck? This is so weird, but so cool. I don't even, I don't even know. Like, are rats going to take over the world, guys? Like, what's going on here? Thinking the brain type. B. Have you seen the video that, that is included in the article? It's like five minutes long. It's called "The Rats in Doom." 
And just seeing seeing this rodent move around this space is just incredible. Uh, I no. was watching it as Dan was. Sorry, go ahead. Go, go, no, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying that I was watching it while while Dan was speaking, and it's an, it's incredible. And as the article kind of says, like, is what's the reason that he did this? Was it just to help mankind, maybe in the future? It's like, no, he just got bored. <laughs> and I love that that he just just wanted to just wanted to do this. And I think he should totally start a Twitch channel because any people will watch anything but i think people would definitely be interested in in watching this for sure yeah i would as well i don't want to worry you dan yeah. but um you said you know will rats take over the world will rats take over the world again because it, around the year 1100 they kind of did they've done it they kind of did they've done it before <laughs> wait what happened in the year 1100 the bubonic plague oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> yes. you they tried they really tried for a hot minute Man, those yeah. rats taking over. I don't even know. Yeah. His name is Romero. Romero. The rat? Put that out there. Yeah, the rat. The rat. Doom like rat. That. Doom rat. All right. Well, move, good move. for our Romero. <laughs> Moving <laughs> into our next story, guys. This is, uh, this is one that I'm just going to be, you know, blown away by because I'm a huge... No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to not know anything about this, but I think it's pretty pretty big news. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 news is coming spring of 2022. Um, they put out a message uh, essentially saying that when they last spoke that they would they were promising that they would have information about it and... Uh, later 2021, but uh, due to COVID-19 and everything else, uh, they had to push back their timeline of everything. Obviously, I'm sure that means the game, you know, is pushed back in their timeline. They haven't announced it yet, but uh, that's definitely, uh, it's great to see transparency like this from uh, from Square because obviously there's a lot of fans that love the series and uh, they're probably like, where is this? Like, I want to know more about it. And so, uh, yeah, this is this is good that uh, we're getting more information in the spring. And that's about my extent of the knowledge of Final Fantasy. So I'm going to have to pass to you guys on this. And I hope somebody. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean it hasn't been announced yet? What are you talking about? Wait, did I say it? Wait, or shown off. Wait, am I confused? Wait. You might be. Yeah, there was a trailer. Oh, never mind. I told you I don't know much about <laughs> <laughs> me either, but I'm really excited for this one. That that the the trailer they showed off for it, like I don't know the the narrative notes hit for me. The setting really hit for me. It seems more uh, less uh, magicy. I mean, there's still like a lot of magic stuff in it, but it still seems like uh, also focused on like the people and like that like, almost like Witcher esque setting, but not quite Witcher. Um, but like as always, take your time if you need it. Obviously, COVID huge impact on the games industry. We're seeing that happen with plenty of games, so. No, not surprising and uh, yeah there's always like it's okay like just take your time as long as these devs aren't crunching i'm okay with another delay yep yeah um i'm excited for final fantasy 16 as well uh i loved 15 that's the one with the boy band i'm pretty sure right yes yes, yes. love 15 that was great obviously love final fantasy 7 remake so yeah I'm, I'm excited for another final fantasy and what they did show up did seem like like up my alley uh, so, yeah, definitely excited. Take your time. I trust you guys. Square Enix, I think, has been doing really good, with the exception of Marvel's uh, The Avengers. But everything else, I think, they've been knocking out of the park as of late. So take your time. Take your time. I'll never play this game in my life, but I hope that you guys enjoy <laughs> it. I hope you enjoy K-Pop Simulator. What is it? Final Fantasy, right? Yes, whatever. I hope you K-Pop guys... K-Pop Simulator is the other game. The Pokemon-type little... game? Yeah. Said the science Whatever. kid as uh, as during the oh. during the game awards. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't play Final Fantasy. But uh, is this the final one or? Oh no! Never. No. <laughs> I don't even oh, know Final Fantasy. And I'm. Does anyone no. know off the top of their head uh, what number game this is? Like it's called sixteen, but does anyone know oh. what number it actually is? Probably in the twenties, right? It's in the twenties for sure. Yeah. It's gotta be high twenties. Wasn't there like a fourteen two or a fourteen three or something like that? Thirteen. Thirteen is the one that had all those those yeah. numbers. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Lightning returns. And, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, okay. Let's, really let's, let, let, let's all let everyone let everyone guess. Nobody Google this. Okay. Let, legit, <laughs> okay. Hands up. Guess. 
I'm gonna uh, guess. I'm, I'm gonna guess there's 32 Final Fantasy games. <laughs> I feel like that's even a low number. I'm gonna guess okay. based on your reaction. I'm gonna guess yeah. <laughs> 55. I'm gonna search it up now. Gage. I'm gonna say 36. Okay, how much is it? <laughs> And you are all like still undershooting it. There are oh 95 God. different ones. Oh, no, oh there isn't. No, there's not. Yeah. No, there's not. I guess 95. there's a bunch of Japanese ones too that haven't released here as well, I guess. Or when does it end? Do. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it, it never does. You know, you know oh what? Gage, Gage, you're no longer allowed to complain that Microsoft continued Halo after Halo 3 because they don't have 95 will, Halo games. I will never stop complaining that Halo continued after 95. Halo 3. I will never. <laughs> I can't wait till we. I can't wait till we talk about Game of the Year, Dan. Oh man, there's, there's a Washington Post article called "Why Is It Called Final Fantasy When There Are So Many?" I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm it. done. It's the never final fantasy. Right. Uh, all right, guys. Moving into. Our next story, Riot Games is set to pay $100 million after reaching a settlement over a gender discrimination lawsuit. Uh, I remember us talking about this when this first popped up. Riot Games has been uh, in the news quite a bit with some issues in terms of harassment and sexual uh, misconduct. So uh, this is, I guess... I don't know if good is the right word, but it's 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 you know good that we're getting to a resolution towards you know some of these issues that Riot has been having, um, and hopefully that this is something that you know Riot's overall company starts to uh, address moving forward, and and this lawsuit being settled uh, helps the previous victims, you know. Uh, get some kind of closure, I guess, on, on the issues that were impacted by, by all of the bad things going on at the studio. So um, apparently, as, as per the agreement, Riot will pay $80 million to all current and former full-time employees and temporary agency contractors in California who identify as women and worked at the company from November of 2014 to the present day. The other twenty million will go towards attorneys' fees and miscellaneous expenses. My goodness, that's a big payday for those lawyers. Uh, <laughs> furthermore, Riot has agreed to have its internal reporting and pay equity processes monitored by a third-party company that is approved by both Riot and the DFEH for three years. Which that's that's a pretty big you know uh, thing to come out of this as well. So that's good. And final approval of this settlement is uh, coming by the courts, which is currently pending, and a hearing is expected to take place within the coming months. Um, so, yeah, some good news here, and there is some repercussions uh, as a result of it that is uh, going to benefit the studio and having uh, more pay equivalency between uh, people at the studio for, for the next three years, it looks like. So that's... That's uh, at least some some bright news out of this. Yeah, the the best news is that uh, towards the end of it, where it said that it's it's internal reporting and its pay equity process will be monitored by a third party. I like getting that uh, out of the hands of, of Riot um, and out to somebody else who hopefully is like an unbiased party, right? Right. Um, who will hopefully do uh, the right thing and 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 respond um, accurately and effectively. Like that is that is actual step in the right direction. Payment is great, don't get me wrong, but seeing pro uh, progress like this like on, on the actual logistic level, I'd yeah. love to see that. Um, I, I love this because it involves a P word. And do you know what the P word is, boys? Pay? Precedent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Precedent. Mm. Activision, you're next, all right? <laughs> this is a tenth of a billion dollars. This is not a small settlement. So, um... All of the fucking weirdos uh, in power at, at these companies that for some reason can't act like normal human beings, like this is this is what this is what's coming. And and Activ Activision wants to you know bring in their biased third party. They don't want an unbiased third party yeah. to, to evaluate <laughs> right. them. This is what happens: a hundred million dollars. It's not a small settlement. I'm very happy, very happy with this, and hopefully the uh, the ball keeps on rolling because it's. 
<sighs> the most frustrating part of all of this is that it's really not that hard to just talk to people like they're people and treat people like they're people. It's really not that hard. Yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah. Uh, we've got Kira Craft in the chat saying, it's the last one, I promise. Ha ha. I don't know what the heck you're talking about, Kira. But F- Final oh, Fantasy Final Fantasy. Fantasy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was I, confused. It's there's last also night. There's 90 Sonic games, and <laughs> what that means Final Fantasy has more <laughs> games than Sonic. And Sonic has. A, I know Sonic has a lot of games. I didn't think it was 90, but I didn't. Final For some Fantasy, reason, that wasn't surprising. You said 90 Sonic games, and just I didn't that, even bat nine. It's just that Final Fantasy is numbered, and it's not at 90 yet. <laughs> no, it's not even close. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> Oh my god. So I weird. love that me and Gage were like, yeah, it's gotta be in the 20s somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, high 20s, close. 28, 29. Jesus. Uh, before we close this story out, guys, I just thought this was kind of cool. I actually uh, know someone uh, who I went to school with in, at my college, and he actually announced on Facebook like a week and a half ago that he is starting at Riot Games starting next year, which I was like, dang. Uh, and I think they're based out of LA because he uh, he said he was he was uh, going to work there pretty much right after I got back from the game awards. So I was like, I messaged him, "Hey, congrats, congratulations!" And then he messaged me back, "How was your flight from LA?" I was like, "Oh, wow!" <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll we'll have an inside source there. I could maybe be like, "Hey, how's okay. it going over there?" Oh, I, I except I just divulged <laughs> that info, but they don't oh, know no. who I'm talking. About. They don't know who it is, you know. No, it could be know. anyone. Uh, <laughs> moving into the last story, guys. This is a, a little bit of a somber story, but uh, the great John Madden has passed away, which is you wouldn't think of as like a, a you know necessarily a video game news story, but obviously his name is all over the biggest you know sports franchise of all the video games out there, arguably. Um, so obviously Madden is such a big deal and, uh, it, it's very sad that, uh, he just unexpectedly passed away supposedly. And, uh, obviously he lived a full life. He's 85 years old, but, um, he had such an impact on the NFL and video games, like sport sports video games like the fact that his name was on there and like he had there's a lot of things that people don't know about him that he like inspired positive change for as well like for instance he was the one that brought it to ea to say like hey we need to address like concussions in the video games like we need to make this you know more representative of like what's actually happening here like to acknowledge this head injury and not just say oh it's a head injury what is that like and uh i did see i'm not going to call anyone out or anything but i did see some people on on twitter just blasting john madden and and saying like just some nasty things about him like the day he passed away and i'm just like they were basically calling out how the NFL handles uh, concussions and serious head injuries. And I saw a great response from someone. I can't remember who it was, but uh, he posted John Madden was one of the biggest proponents against, you know, concussions in the NFL. Like he was, there's broadcasts of him from the eighties and nineties of him saying like, this player has a concussion. They shouldn't be going back in the game. Like the, the coaches should not be allowing him to go back in the game. Like he says that on the broadcast. Like that's something that if you did that nowadays, I'm sure the NFL would be going down their throats the, of the commentators that are saying those things. So like that, that's such a important thing to like take away from this. Like the NFL is not a perfect company at all. And they make, you know, billions of bill upon billions of dollars. And that it is arguable whether they care about the players or not. Uh, but John Madden was not, you know, the NFL. He was a big icon in the NFL, but he was not the, like, he's not the NFL. So like, yes, a, a sad day um, for him and his family. So uh, I just thought that was uh, something to, kind of memorialize him you know as uh as someone who who fought against you know things that the nfl don't seem to care about as much so i saw i also saw a lot of people conflating john madden with the like the entity that is the nfl 
which like even I knew that like that's that that's just not how that works. Yeah. And I don't know. Twitter Twitter can be a very vitriolic space. <laughs> yeah. Um, especially when, when people the big caliber people like pass away. So not surprising, but yeah. Um I'm not a big NFL fan myself, but like even I understand and respect the, the influence that John Madden had on the game and as well as the video game space. Like I, I used to call you know the NFL games Madden because that's that's how I learned them and, and then later learning that, you know, it's because of John Madden. So rest in peace indeed. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I, I like Christian. I'm not a huge Madden guy, but I knew I knew the voice, I knew his name, but yeah, I didn't didn't know much else about him besides what Dan kind of said just now. So it's good to know that he was a stand up guy, but I I didn't know that much about him. So definitely rest in peace. It's sad that uh we lost a, another legend, which is happening very often these days, unfortunately. Yep. I'd like to say, even if he wasn't a stand up guy, you guys <laughs> Twitter, you guys can probably wait a day. You can yeah. probably just <laughs> wait a day. Let the people who do like wh- whatever person this is, insert name here, have their day, remember him, and then you know start filing the complaints maybe 24 hours after or something like that. But yeah, that's unfortunate. I hope I saw a lot of people throwing up concepts. I hope um, that uh, EA will throw him up on the cover for 2022. Mm. Um, I think that would be a really respectful thing to do. I, I feel like they're not going to because they're going to think, well, nobody's going to know who he is. But at the same time, it's like your your series is named after the guy, yeah. so maybe just maybe just do it this once. I think I think that would be they've got an open net to do something really nice there. So I think that would be uh, that would be pretty cool if they did that. But yeah, yeah, that I mean that's the least they could do. They literally you know ran on the the back of his name for so many years. Yep. Like that's yeah, absolutely, and I. I think that they will do it, but here's the thing, Gage. Like they they do so many freaking covers now. It's it's just stupid. Like they can have like yeah. ultimate edition cover, you know, regular yeah, all these. True. Yeah, it's it gets a little crazy. Um, but uh, Brenty joining us in the the YouTube chat as always. Thank you, Brenty. You're Hello. the greatest. <laughs> uh, moving into what you got for me, guys. Guys, I have. Not completed my objective from last week. However, however, I am very close. I am in. The, I have two missions left. There's, I think, 15 nice. missions. I'm on 13. So, of Guardians of the Galaxy. So, man, this video game, the more I play it, the more I freaking love this game. Uh, and this is crazy because... Oh, sorry, Christian. You, you look like you're, you're about to ask me something. You're on Chapter 13, you said? Yes. No, yeah, more than two. Oh. Wait. <laughs> 13? <laughs> Maybe it's 14. No, it's. I think it's 14, actually. Because I think okay. I looked it up and there's 16. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe I've started two and a half. Yeah. You, you, no, you're good. Uh, but yes, uh, the more I play this game, the more I love this game. Like, it's insane. The story is really, really good. I understand now why it won Best Narrative because it is very well written. Uh, all of the characters fit perfectly, I think. All of their, all their, you know, lines are fit perfectly for who those characters are. So I absolutely love that. Uh, the banter between Drax and 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 Groot and Rocket and Rocket in particular. Rocket is a character that is like very hard to get right, but it's like he comes across perfectly because he gets so arrogant, like towards the middle of the game and then, you know, things happen and yeah, there it's just, it's great. I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't played yet, but uh, the story is really good. Uh, even the gameplay, like I remember when we were first seeing like this revealed, like the gameplay reveal of this game. And I was like, all right, this this almost looks like a time splitters like game, like it's on rails essentially. Like your your targeting system kind of looks like that. I'm like, I don't know that I'm gonna like this. But then actually playing it, it doesn't feel like that. It's, it's way different. Obviously, the the targeting system is is something where you know you snap to targets, but like that's where the the similarities end in terms of that. Like there's so much depth to the gameplay with all the abilities that you can use with all the guardians. You you command all the 
Guardian's abilities and your own abilities, which is gets a little chaotic at times, I will admit. But like, I love that so much because it, it's it's so unique. Like every ability does something very specific and like you're fighting certain bosses and you need certain abilities to stop them and and certain, you know, elements to stop them like you know lightning or or wind or fire or, like I, I just love that nuance in that gameplay and i've came across uh, or came out of it uh really liking it a lot more than what i thought i would initially like it but uh yeah it's great it's great and uh i love it um and obviously i'm still playing halo infinite of course uh played with gage and Ro this weekend still waiting for christian to you know join us on that but come on man <laughs> Just kidding, uh, but no, we were we were killing it. Uh, Ro Ro was killing it. Gage was killing it. Not as much as me though. Uh, well, a little bit but, more. But uh, no, nah. <laughs> Ro. Killing it is, a, is an overstatement for me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was not killing it. Ah, you were doing good. You were doing. <laughs> thank good. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ro, what you know what I would? You know what? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. no, sorry. Go ahead. You know what I was doing while you guys were playing Halo? What, what were you doing, Christian? Ranking the From Software games. Oh, <laughs> as you should. That sounds like fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Does it though? I like, I love ranking things. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that your number one? If you don't mind me asking, unless that's a surprise for oh. a, a video essay no, 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 in the future. No, no, no. no. Yeah. My, my number one is Sekiro. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, okay, I want, that's one of the Dark Souls or the Soulsborne game that I actually wanted try as well besides elden ring but definitely want to try that good. one too for great things. uh for what i've got for you guys is absolutely nothing besides halo infinite as dan alluded to i played a, a better multiplayer but besides that i have not played anything just disappointment for you all i apologize um i do want to get i want to get back to bayonetta for sure though i had a blast playing that just haven't had the time to get back to it so hopefully by next week i will have either beaten it or got a bit deeper into it um yeah and i i really wanted to beat eastward by the end of the year don't think that's going to happen in the next two days <laughs> um but maybe maybe who knows who knows but yeah those are the two games i want to get back to eastward and and bayonetta right now christian what you got for me Amazing. yes i like many others took advantage of the epic games uh sale with their like ten dollar coupon which i found out is not a ten dollar coupon for um like your total cart, it's for each item in your cart that's over fifteen dollars. Dang! So I was like, wait, hold on, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. I can buy like three <laughs> games for forty dollars. Are you kidding me? So I did, and um, I bought Inscription. Haven't haven't played it yet. Although I want to get to it. I will probably in January. What I have been playing, however, is Battlefield twenty forty two. And let me tell you, everybody is wrong. Oh. The game works. The game works just fine. Is it kind of ugly? Sure. Am I having fun? Yes, and that's what matters. <laughs> Playing the Bad Company 2 maps and the Battlefield 3 maps for $30, amazing. Playing the new maps for like the same amount of money, I don't know. Having fun with my friends, like, yeah, I can't put, put a price tag on that. I've, I've been having tons of fun, had no issues with it. So I've been enjoying my 8 to 10 hours of 2042. Um, sorry for you guys who, who haven't. I'm sorry. Uh, I've also been playing Naraka Blade Point. And if you're unfamiliar with Naraka, it is a hero shooter. Um, but instead of like using guns, it's uh, all about sword play. So like different kinds of katanas, great swords and stuff uh, with a like heavy emphasis, uh, hero shooter battle royale uh, with heavy emphasis on, on movement. So like you're collecting materials, you're getting grapple points and then you'll see other players who are squatting up and like you get into like these epic sword fights. You can use abilities with like each character that you're using. Um, and that first day, nothing but dubs with me and my friend. And then we got like ranked and put into like actual matches. And it's like, oh, the, there are some sweats in this game I had no idea about. There's these two characters in particular that are behind paywalls. And my friend's like, dude, let's let's throw some money in. And it's like, you know, OK, I spent six dollars on Naraka. So why not? Maybe I'll put ten dollars in and get one of these characters. But I refuse. I refuse to let my morals be broken that easily. I will not be exploited. So I will not be buying these characters. I'm going to save up my silver coins and buy them with that. Nice. Nice. Isn't Bruce Lee a character in this game? It's a skin. It's a skin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gage, what you got for me? I have been playing a little bit of Escape from Tarkov with the new wipe. Uh, here and there, not 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 too much. A uh, lot of lot of Halo Infinite. Um, 
multiplayer, like we all said, having good times, custom games, all that good stuff. Uh, doing better than Dan. Uh, and then um, oh, what I've been playing, what I've been playing uh, a lot of is Hades. Still, still. What? How many weeks has it been since I brought up that I played Hades for the first time? Three weeks? Four weeks? Five weeks? I don't know. Like five or six. Yeah, I was gonna say it's getting up there. Still playing it like just as much as I was when I when I started falling into it. Like I love this game. I absolutely adore this game. It's so good. And I'm not gonna keep talking about it because I've said this like six weeks in a row now. So it's fine. It's good. I forget. Have you beaten Hades? You've beaten it once, at least once, right? So when I updated you guys like three weeks after I started playing it, I beat it once. At this point, I've beaten it seven or eight times now. I'm just oh I'm, wow. I'm going. I'm going through. I want to get because I know that there is something that you. I don't know about the ending of the game, but there's an item that you get from that thing that happens afterwards. And I'm waiting to get that item from it, and it still hasn't. Hasn't happened. Hasn't happened. I was just reading the nonsense going on in the in the document. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's good. It's so good. It's really, really good. It's the gameplay is perfect. It's it's. I would call it perfect. Perfect. Wow. Yep. You're perfect. I guess Thank I got. You. Wow. I guess I gotta <laughs> play Hades. You haven't played Hades? No. I I can't Come say on, anything. Man. I didn't play it until this year. <laughs> I can't say anything. Me either. All right. Well, maybe maybe someday. Maybe. Uh, moving in to our topic of the show, guys. Game of the oh. year. Uh-oh. <laughs> what happened? Just the top of the show. Oh. <laughs> game, <laughs> game of the year 2021. Uh, I thought it would be uh, good for us to, to pick our top you know, three to five games uh, of the year, and then at the end we can kind of talk about what our favorites were, and then maybe we come with this consensus. I don't know if we will be able to or like if we'll have enough crossover to get there, but we'll, we'll find out. We'll see. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about, guys, Resident Evil Village. This video game was real good and i've already seen it on maybe someone else's list here but uh it is a great video game uh it is literally what i didn't think that capcom will be able to do after resident evil 6 like resident evil 7 was great obviously and it was great for what it was but it was a, it was a relatively different game than resident evil 6 and resident evil 8 kind of continues that however it kind of harps back to like the original series like resident evil 4 resident evil 3 or 2 uh so like i absolutely loved village and like the variety of the enemies and just the the survival horror aspect and just the weirdness that comes with a resident evil game like i loved all of that stuff and uh it was all put together in a beautiful package like this game is actually a really beautiful video game like it's incredible what I, what capcom's been able to do with their engine over the years so uh i'm very very intrigued to see the future of this franchise and i did not expect to to continue to love resident evil uh as much as i do now after the disaster that was resident evil 6 so very happy that they've kind of righted the ship now and uh, put out a couple of really, really solid Resident Evil games and possibly get a Resident Evil 4 remake uh, very soon. Uh, Ooh, I'm waiting. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my first one. And uh, I'll just uh, go ahead. I'll just go ahead and pass it to Gage since I know he has Resident Evil on his list as well. And we can just keep talking about Resident Evil. Gage. Absolutely. Well, this is that beautiful package that it's wrapped in that Dan was talking about. Right <laughs> oh my god. So, she won best that. performance, right? Or... She did, deservingly so, because she stole every minute of that game that she was in, which is only not that much, unfortunately. But As Christian uh, yeah. was sitting next to me saying, she better not win. <laughs> Isn't that I never said this. Wait, that no. like Wait didn't you say that? that? Like I Christian. thought you said that. Maybe you I would never say that about any, any person. No, 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 no. no. Okay. okay. Sorry. They all deserve to win. Never mind. I wish they all won. Never mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was um, misremembering. No, it's it, it is so good. It, it it it's. I know a lot of people said this when it came out, but it felt like Resident Evil Seven and Resident Evil Four came together and in one package. And that is that is essentially what this game is. I couldn't I couldn't think of a better way to describe it. Um, it yeah, for me, it, it hit that perfect balance of pace where it's like. You have some horror moments and some sort of survival, uh, that old school survival horror that Resident Evil is known for, where you're 
scavenging supplies and and ammo and then you also have that res that new age resident evil which is resident evil 4 onwards where it's very action heavy and all that stuff and this this managed to do both of those things perfectly um so yeah i really enjoyed resident evil village and uh i think it's probably mm, one of my favorite resident evils uh overall i think like where would you rank it in terms of the rest like two three so i would say two remake is number one for me i think that's the quintessential resident evil experience like if somebody's like i want to try resident evil which one should i try resident evil 2 remake this is what resident evil is here you go i think this is right underneath that i think this is right underneath that i don't think there's like i haven't played four in a very long time and maybe four remake i mean i'm sure is gonna be amazing but um i would put this as number two for me here's what you do you buy a meta oculus whatever they're called now meta quest 2 you have buy resident you buy resident evil 2 in vr resident evil 4 vr I don't want to. I want to play it. I want to play it. (laughs) That's that's fair. That's fair. I stopped playing it because I wanted to play it normally too. But see, I knew. I I thought about it. I got very hyped when they announced that. But I was like, I'm gonna play this for 30 minutes and then wish that I could sit down with the controller. So I'm just gonna wait Mm -hmm. until that happens. You can play sitting down. (laughs) It tells you. It tells you. It does. I'm just just saying. I'm just saying. I I feel like uh, I'm in the same boat. I I kind of just want to play Resident Evil 4 Remake. I think I tried to play it again on uh, this gen, and I was like, all right, this doesn't quite hold up as well as I remember, so I'm just going to wait for the remake. Uh, Kira Craft says in the chat, I just bought Resident Evil Village just today, bought it used, looking forward to playing it. It is a great game. You will not be disappointed. You're in for a treat, my friend. Yes. Is it on sale? Because I, I haven't, I haven't played it either. I wasn't that high on seven, so I. If you're looking for it on Steam, almost certainly they've got their big winter sale going on. Smart man. Um. So Roe and Christian, I have no idea what your lists are. So whichever one of you wants to go next, uh, please. Okay, I will go. I'm trying to decide which one I say first. My first one, I'll do one that I don't think is on anybody's ever hood. And that was an indie game that I played at the beginning of the year, and it wears its Undertale influences on its sleeve. It's very obvious that it's taking inspiration from that game. I do think it stands alone, like it has its own unique tale, and it deals with, or it talks about death and accepting what comes after, if anything. Um, but the gameplay is uh, is the real treat, where I th- Every time I talk about it, I think the only way that I could best describe it is psychedelic beat battles. And I like to use the analogy or use the image of, you all know Guitar Hero, or the strip of uh, like the guitar rift, or I don't even know what to call it, like the lanes uh, that you, you would usually see, how the beats are coming towards you that you have to hit on. In, the game, in this game, the beats are coming towards you, but you have to dodge them. the enemies, sort of. Your opponent is on the opposite side of you, and then they're sending a bunch of obstacles your way, and instead of trying to hit them on the beat, you're trying to... But while that's going on, there's a bunch of crazy, like, beautiful, intense, visual stuff going on. That's what I've seen in any game, let alone maybe gaming, honestly, but it's just beautiful art that's happening at the same time that can be distracting, but also really nice to look at at the same time. Uh, but the gameplay is super tough. It, the, the accessibility options are there, though, so you can like dumb it down a bit if you just want to experience the story and just look at the pretty colors. Um, I, I ended up getting the good ending on my first playthrough, but that only filled me with more morbid curiosity of what's to happen if it shows the opposite stuff. So I do want to definitely go back and see what happens if I do, if I make opposite choices and see what happens differently. But Everett is a really, really good indie game. Um, so if anybody out there likes these, I would definitely su- suggest it. If anybody out there likes Undertale and you're looking to uh, hold you over until Delta Rune Chapter Three comes out, definitely check out Everhood. So yeah, it's a fantastic game, and I'm surprised oh, that I'm still yes, yeah, I'm I'm still surprised that I'm still so high on it after it came out in March, I think uh, March or February, and I'm still still thinking about it. So I had a blast with it. Amazing. Nice. Another game that's always pretty much on sale, pretty often. Yes, I've seen it on sale a few times. Christian, what what is on your Listen, list? If you're if you're attuned to my Twitter, 
Uh, of course, three weeks ago, I put out a small article titled My Top Games of 2021. You may have seen it. You may have skimmed it. You may have missed it altogether. All of those, totally fine. Um, so I will start with my number five pick here, from the, reading from the blog post. Uh, Steph Gingrich Gang, Rise Up. My number five pick is Life is Strange, True Colors. Wow. Uh, of co- I describe this game as Gilmore Girls, the video game, not just because of its setting, but because each of the characters feels like warm like I'm playing, uh, like I'm, <laughs> it's like uh, video games. It's a cup of coffee, but video games. Uh, and, and everything revolves around Alex Chen and the emotions she feels as she, as she traverses um, the events that I don't want to spoil in, uh, in the town. I almost said Haven Springs. It's not Haven Springs. It is Haven Springs. Yeah, it is Haven Springs. Um, but more so than the actual, like, minute to minute gameplay, it's, it's those, like, small moments of reflection that the game, like, purposely places at, at certain moments where you have to just sit there and think about uh, the moments that, like, you just experienced through the lens of Alex um, that, like, really stood out for me in this game. What, what, are, we, what are we laughing at? Everyone's, everyone's giggling. I was just oh, okay. reading. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even have the doc. Okay, everyone's, like, laughing at tomfoolery happening in the, in the Google Doc as I talk about Alex Chen's life. It's fine. I'm, the, you described mm-hmm. it as Gilmore Girls video game. I'm, I'm in. Sold. Yeah, uh, not great. not actually though because it's still full price which is brutal but <laughs> i really want to play this i really want to play this rashan's been talking it up and um i was kind of already planning on playing it but if you're saying it's it's uh life is strange stars hollow i'm i'm, I'm in i'm all in dude it's it's really good the writing is like probably some of the best writing that i've seen this year it's up there with like you know guards of the galaxy type writing and this is like standalone right this doesn't uh go with the other games correct I've only played Life is Strange 1, and this uh, felt very much standalone. Cool. Yeah. Steph is a returning character from a DLC from Life is Strange 1, I think, before the storm. Otherwise, totally you can play it by it on its own. Okay. Um, my next one, guys, is a game that I just talked about in uh, What You Got For Me, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, obviously everything I said in the what you got for me is absolutely still true and while I haven't finished the game I'm only you know a couple missions from finishing it I feel like I have a good enough grasp on it at this point to say like this is definitely one of my top games from this year like again the writing is phenomenal the the way that the characters interact with one another makes perfect sense uh and it it kind of does it in a way that's similar to the way the mcu handles the guardians but like in a way that's like different like i know that sounds stupid that they're similar but different but like it, it very much rings true because i feel like especially for rocket in particular because like in the guardians movies rocket is obviously like very combative and stuff like that but then he ends up you know he's very you know i guess lighter i guess in, in the mcu whereas in the game he is much harder i feel like and much you know grittier like man we need to do this and it's like i love that like rocket's just so direct and uh gets to the point he's like he makes his voice heard which is is fantastic um and groot groot is just groot like i love that they just continue to ride the train of just him saying i am groot but then like they play with that because rocket can understand what he's saying and so rocket then manipulates like conversations based on you know well groot said this well how do we know groot said this because nobody can speak groot's language except for you rocket so uh yeah it's it's pretty great uh i love the banter and everything so very very good video game so uh gage what's your next one uh my next one so i've only got three and i'm just gonna update everyone on the order of things so Resident Evil 2 was my second pick for Game of the Year. Um, so my third pick is actually a game that came out at the very beginning and unfortunately has fallen victim to that uh, uh, release release schedule bias. But Hitman 3 was this year. It was January. It was right at the beginning of the year, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, it had what I would consider the best Hitman level in all of Hitman, which was the uh, the Manor level. I think yes. it was the second mission. That's that is the most well designed sandbox level in Hitman easily, and maybe in any sort of game ever. I mean, we're talking about a specific level for a sandbox style game. 
It is perfect. It is everything Hitman needs to be. Um, and uh, I just think that this game, it, uh, I think I think it got done dirty because not only was it a complete game on launch, very few bugs. Um, it had the always online thing, but again, that's something that the industry does. There's a lot of other games that are single player that do that, so I don't really hold that against it. I hate it, but a lot of games do that nowadays, so whatever. But not only was the game complete and it had a bunch of content to work towards, but IO has been incredible with this bringing the maps from Hitman 1 and 2, not only just porting the maps over, but bringing all the content and putting it to this new engine. Yes. Um, a lot of extra work that did not have to be done at all. Um, and that was all ready to go for launch. Everything was ready to go for launch. Hitman 3 was incredible. Um, a really great achievement by IO Interactive. I'm incredibly excited for their James Bond stuff, and I think yeah. that I was very sad to see them snubbed at the Game Awards because Hitman 3 was incredible, uh, as I've just said. So Hitman 3 is my number three game of the year. Um, awesome just good stuff i had a blast playing it and they're kind of in a like weird it. spot too like they're they're an indie developer but like they're a bigger indie, indie developer so i feel like it's hard for them to you know get the spotlight in something like the game awards because you know they're you know they don't they aren't owned by microsoft or or sony or someone with a big you know push for it's almost yeah you're right it's almost like an oxymoron where it's like if you're an indie you need to stay below a threshold. Yeah. Otherwise, people kind of don't consider you an indie developer anymore. But they are. They are an independent developer. This is an independent game, and it's awesome. It's incredible. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I, and, that, and that's a good point. So if they were at the Game Awards, what category would they be nominated for, right? Would it be Best right. Action Game? Would it be Best Indie Game? I could see people getting upset about that. It's not trying, you know... It's a lot of stuff. They're in a very weird spot. I agree with that. But um, in terms of... Um, what they've been pumping out of their studio, like banger after banger after banger. Hitman one was was incredible. Hitman two was great, like and Hitman three is just even better. If I can interject for a second, yeah, yeah, I spent like three hours in that manner level. It was absolutely incredible. Oh, Fantastic. so good. Yeah, so good, bro. What's your next one? Oh, so, you know what? I should have had you go well, after Christian. I forgot. I won't spend. No, it's okay. I will not spend too much time on it. I just want. It is true. Not the strange true colors. Definitely on my list as well. Um, so I will say now that it is my number one. But I'm just going to say it now because we we talked about it already, and I'll talk about my number two next. But uh, yes, Life is Strange True Colors. I I was waiting for that game for well as soon as it it was announced. I was like. I can't wait to get this game. I dive right in as soon as it's available. I pretty damn close finished it, almost beat it in one sitting. So obviously you know how much I loved it. Um, the impact of the story like, still lingers with me three months later, where like looking out for your family is important, but you, yourself, your happiness and health should be number one. And Alex Chen is easily my favorite um, out of the Life is Strange protagonist, is protagonist to date. And uh, Human Springs and the supporting cast Everybody is so fun. The, the town itself, as, as Christian has talked about when we've talked about it before, is like its own character, too, as, as he describes it as sort of uh, town, which I'm blanking on the name now. But it has so much character as well. So, yeah, True Colors, easily one of my favorite Life is Strange games and favorite games that I've played this year, easily. Love the story. Love the characters. Love it so much. I still have to play the DLC, too. I still have to play the step DLC. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wait, isn't Steph the one that you guys like love? Have a oh yes. Okay, stop. Right. <laughs> uh, Christian, what's your next one? Wait, what was Rose's second pick? I'll talk about. Oh, I'll I guess I guess yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll talk about yeah, okay. It. Yeah. Uh, blink and you miss it, folks. My number four pick is Before Your Eyes. Uh, and let me tell you, this is the reason why I play video games, folks. Uh. Again, like I'm, I'm like a narrative. I, 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 I look for narrative games uh, mostly. Like I, I like uh, narratives that like really impact me and like resonate with me and like make me think about my own life in, in different ways than, than I, I normally do in my routine. But beyond that, I think like the the game mechanic of the game is like something I had never experienced before. For those unfamiliar, it uses the webcam to detect uh, um, the blinking of your eyelids. Um, and that mechanic, every time you blink, you jump forward in time. So it could be, 
you know, um, a minute. Uh, it could be five minutes. It could be the next day. It could be five wow. years. You, ju- you just don't know. And so as you progress through this narrative, you're finding yourself in like these like deeply emotional moments <laughs> that you don't want to leave. And so, yeah, Dan, yeah, yeah, like I'm just sit- really I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting there doing my best to, to, to stay in that moment because like I don't want to leave it. Like after that, it's gone. Um, and I'm like fighting back tears because w- w- like what's happening on screen is like so moving and the, those tears are causing me to try and blink. And suddenly I, I'm blinking and I'm in the next scene and like I'm having to fix my eyes and I blink again and I mix the next moment. And I'm just like <laughs> devastated at just like uh, losing everything. And yet I think that's what makes it so special is that uh, like these moments are so fleeting and just having that reflect uh, the way I, I look at my own life and, and what's important to me. Like truly one of the best narratives I've ever experienced. Nothing quite like this. Um, and it yes. was on sale. I picked it up for like less than ten dollars before your eyes. So good, Christian. Yeah, Christian said it's so good. I, I played it based on his recommendation, and it is such a good game. I yeah, you guys should definitely check it out. It's it's super cheap, even if it's not on sale. It's it's so good. It's such a good story. Moving, so good. And it's I, short. I it on it's my like list. yeah, two hours. I, I did it in an afternoon. Yeah, it was super quick. But yeah, so good. I have so to good. check that out. It, it it almost sounds like a, like a metaphor of life. Like you you blink yeah. and there it goes. Like <laughs> you fun. know, yeah. Hmm. That's uh, yeah. That sounds really really cool. Uh, how does it? I'm I'm curious. How does it uh, pick up with your glasses on? Do you, did you have any issues with that or? There's a setting for yeah. that too. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. that's awesome. Cool. Uh, moving to my next one, guys. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It took me a long time to get this game finally completed this year. Uh, it was many months because I was playing all kinds of other things, mainly Master Chief Collection with all the stuff I had to get. But uh, love this game. Absolutely phenomenal uh, PS5 exclusive. Obviously, Insomniac are a bunch of freaking wizards over there. The technical prowess that they're able to do with this game is incredible. Uh, the amount of stuff on the screen, like the bolts and, and the visual flair and the, the effects and the just the graphical fidelity is incredible. The fur on Ratchet and Rivet are mm. amazing. Uh, and just the story in general was just really lighthearted and fun. And uh, it's exactly what I want from a Ratchet and Clank game. So uh, obviously the studio, in my opinion, this studio is the best sony exclusive studio right now and yes a lot of people are out there saying naughty dog which i have my own problems with naughty dog with uh, last of us 2 which <laughs> we won't go into that for right now but uh yeah i i absolutely love insomniac and what they're doing right now and i feel like they're the best playstation developer out there right now and maybe one of the best developers in general out there right now and they're they i hope they keep killing it spider-man uh 2 and and wolverine mm, can't wait can't wait s s tier photo mode by the way and, and yes. rift apart. it's amazing. incredible the amount of options like you can change the the poses you can change their facial expressions you can there's so much you're right christian totally uh gauge what is your next game well oh, wait I only have... only... okay sorry. i was gonna say do you want to let everybody get so that we all do our number one at the same time yeah, yeah, that's I fine. Yeah. Except Ro already revealed his, but we'll pretend. That's okay. <laughs> this is I could I honestly this could these are kind of no I won't say they're interchangeable. Life is strange. True colors is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so should I set this one out too? Uh, do you, you just have three as well? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, yeah. Christian, I have, I have five. Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Christian. It's gonna just be me and you. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll make it quick. <laughs> I, I, I will as well okay guys samus has never been cooler metroid dread is one of my favorite nintendo games period it unabashedly rocks i think what mercury steam d- did was like absolutely fantastic beyond just like the level i mean there are a few stuff that uh, legit i have criticisms about like i think uh, a better map would have uh, suited me a lot better for my place uh, my play style or the, like just even my play experience i think definitely accessibility is a huge one that would have gone uh, such a long way but beyond that, I think the level design was like perfect N- or near perfect. I had so much fun. Um, I would c- I would consider it challenging, but not impossible, like kind of like uh, akin to like the FromSoft games where like it really demands patience and like your focus. And if you're not performing 100 percent, particularly with some bosses, you will get rocked. 
And so like you have to be very much in the moment. So that I appreciated for it because a lot of games I end up feeling like just playing passively. And this one it was like, I have to play this actively. But beyond that, I think, like I said, Samus has never been cooler. I think the depiction of her is the coolest I've ever seen in any kind of Metroid game. Like her body language, the way she moves, uh, the way the camera like looks beyond behind the visor and shows her eyes and shows them. Like there's so much emotion in just one look by Samus that goes so far. Um, and it's for, for those reasons that like Metroid, I like loved Metroid Dread. I'm, I'm going to interject before Daniel goes because that was my number two. <laughs> okay. So I, I will just talk about it then real quick, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, so yes, Metroid Dread. I loved as well, as much as Christian. Uh, it's I've only played three Metroid games. This is, the thir- this is the first one that I've beaten, though. And as Christian said with the map, like at times it's frustrating to 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 like travel around, but slowly discovering like new pockets of the planet is always super satisfying. And then reaping the benefits from just dis- exploring or destroying like the the crazy challenging creatures that inhabit the planet is so rewarding. Um, never did I feel like I never felt um, that the combat was unfair. Um, it was challenging, and that was super fun. And if I was ever stuck, I always knew that there was the option to backtrack and kind of up my arsenal, upgrade my arsenal to come back to the challenge stronger. Um, the final bat- boss battle was so much fun uh, as well. And every I'll get it, I'll get them this time that ended with me. I just got like more fired up to come back so eventually i'll get him this time was actually true and the the sequence that followed is just so badass like the the endings cutscene oh, is yeah. so awesome that just made it all worth it so yeah metro dread is 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 a great game so i hope they i hope mercury steam i they're developing a new uh talked about this is it's, it's a little bit different than metro dread obviously it's like a fantasy game but i'm glad that they're getting their 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 shot at making some more stuff because metro dread was awesome yeah absolutely maybe nintendo give them another shot at metroid they did such a great yeah. job with dread i mean again they, they, they could just keep making the 2d games from there from here on out yeah exactly <laughs> one yeah. of the one of the top selling metroid games as well mm-hmm. yeah have retro make the 3d ones let them make the 2d ones Boom. Mm-hmm. uh hopefully it's not another what how many years until the next one because <laughs> that what was it, 10 plus years like, for dread right yeah it was like 14 or 16, something like that. Yeah. Insane. Uh, okay, before my final reveal, this is my second to last one. Forza Horizon 5, absolutely amazing game. Uh, I, I still feel like it should have got more credit at the Game Awards, but I'm not going to dive, you know, go down that path. It was such a, a... Obviously, it's an iterative game because it's the fifth game in the franchise of the Horizon series, but like it's so 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 much better than than four even it's incredible like the set piece moments of like you're driving in a volcano and you're like what the heck's going on like you're doing like rpg like uh style missions like doing certain things like blowing caps off of the the volcano to release the steam so that the volcano doesn't erupt before you get off the the volcano it's just it's insane stuff like that is just incredible uh like the dive the amount of diversity in the map is incredible like you can go from the jungle uh in mexico all the way up to the freaking volcano like there's no there's literally no bigger difference in in world variety than there is in this game and it's absolutely incredible to see on screen like if ratchet and clank is the visual masterpiece for ps5 this is the visual masterpiece for xbox because it's just so gorgeous to, to look at and it's great to play um and playground games continues to knock it out of the park like the last three Horizon games have been arguably phenomenal. Like, not, I mean, I don't even know that it's arguable, but that it's phenomenal. Uh, and I cannot wait to see what they do with Fable and see how they enhance Fable and make it so much better. And yes, that team's just doing amazing work. Uh, so I will, sorry, go ahead, Christian. For like a week, I ended up on Forza Horizon talk. Yeah, and it was not. It was it was either like reverse drifting around like track, which is just, like cool. Uh, but the other stuff I was saying was just like sound design and Forza Horizon, which was like absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, yeah. racing games you always typically have great sound design, but like this game in particular was awesome. Yes. Yep. 
So, Gage, would you like to do yours now, or do you want since? How do we want to do that? Yeah, I mean, okay, I guess I'll just go then. I guess this is this is my number one game of the year, Forza Horizon Five. I think, I think it is absolutely incredible. It's not only is it a graphical achievement in terms of fidelity, uh, but like Christian said, the audio design, the sound design, is really great. Um, I mean, they've uh, even even the music, right? That, that they choose to play in the radios. They got an excellent selection this year. Um, uh, vehicle variety. Uh, it's massive as always. I think there's over 500 cars this time around. Um, <laughs> it's constantly rewarding. It, there's no battle pass. There's no microtransaction nonsense. There, it's just you play the game. Here you go, and you're constantly getting rewarded. You're constantly getting wheel spins. You're constantly getting super wheel spins. All this stuff. Uh, you unlock things at a really great pace. Like, there's not a single aspect of this game that I can think where they didn't nail it. Um, and uh, accessibility is another one that we always talk about, and how we always want to see more and more. The accessibility options in this game are absolutely nuts. Like on par with what I would like with The Last of Us Part Two. Like just so many options. Um, now, um, you can abuse those options as well, like, uh, somebody watching right now, um, and just get yourself a, a stupid amount of points, but you know what? Oh, well, like, just, if you want to do that, you can do that. If you want to play the game normally, play it normally, but the game is incredible. And it, I think, um, I also think this got snubbed because yeah, this game, they nailed it on every single front for this game. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a, it's a really good game. Yes, yes. Christian, are you ready to reveal yes. your... My number two? Number two? Wait, are we <laughs> yeah. on two? Yes, sorry, yes. yes yeah. Yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. The Forgotten City is the best time loop game I've ever played. Folks, it is a, it is a complete travesty that people have yet to play it. Why should you play The Forgotten City? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll hmm. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, I think if you came out of uh, Deathloop wanting more of, like, an investigation and the way you, like, uncover information and use the information to progress to, to, towards, like, an actual story, The Forgotten City is the game for you. That game is nothing but having conversations with people that challenge my own way of thinking and just, like, let's have conversations about philosophy and religion and about ethics and all these different stuff that's, like, always, like, just, like, uh, changing and challenging you depending on who, on who you're talking to. Uh, but you're getting these pieces of information to find out, like, uh, of course, the, the shtick of the game is that somebody's about to break the golden rule. Once they do, um, everyone in the city turns to gold. Uh, and so you have to find out who is about to break this rule uh, via a time loop. Uh, and again, it's the way you uh, uncover information and use it against or with other people. Uh, and you start to uncover the secrets and where the story goes. That, like, it, it's probably my favorite narrative of the game, hands down. Uh, and I, I took like five pages of notes on Google Docs oh my God. and getting to, getting to that canon ending and legit like jumping off of my couch. I mean, like, yo, this this ending is it. This is a, like th such a fantastic payoff. Play the Forgotten City. On Game Pass. It's on Game Pass. It is on Game Pass. At Game Pass. Powerful. <laughs> okay, actually, I know what your number one pick is, uh, Dan. Okay. Can I can I go real quick just because I yeah. think my friend is about to drop off a present for yeah. me and I might have to like dip for a second. Yeah. Thank you. Don't fear the Reaper, folks. Number one, <laughs> my number <laughs> one pick, of course, if you know who I, I am, Sony Pony. My number one pick is Returnal. I think it's the best PS5 game uh, to date. I think it's way it's way more than the roguelike game that it's 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 posed as. It's more it's more than the uh, arcade lineage uh, of Housemark. It's legit a fantastic sci-fi narrative that that rips stuff from 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 Alien, uh, from stuff like Control, from from Prometheus, um, and like wrapped up in like this like fantastic playing game um, with like incredible dual sense utilization. The 3D audio was fantastic, and then just the story was captivating. I'm I'm all about sci-fi, but the way like the story is still grounded in the main character Celine's trauma and the way she's experiencing and kind of. Uh, going through that trauma in like the the sci-fi setting absolutely fantastic um i think it falls a little bit short there's a little bit left uh at the end that i would have liked a bit more on but otherwise it's as close to a masterpiece this year as, as i can think of um and again the the one thing that I, I really love about this game is that it there's no 
clear answers to the questions it's posing. It's very much think about it and uh, interpret it the way you want to. And that uh, is the kind of game that jives with me. Shout out to the synths in this game. The world number four, I guess. Biome four. Fantastic. Like, and, and my friend. My, what's up? I was just going to say, and like... The- I feel like this is another game that's not getting the credit it deserves because like House Mark made Rezo Gun before, which was a very small arcade game, and like now they're doing full fledged AAA games, and it it did really well. Like give them the credit, you know. Critically, did really well. I, I'm yeah. actually not sure how it did uh, monetarily, but yeah, great game. Sure. Um, By the way, my friend isn't coming anymore, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh. All right, so anyone who listens to this podcast obviously probably already knows what I'm going to say. However, I will preface this with this. I didn't go into this. I know I've said a lot that I love Halo and I love, you know, all the Halo games. I love everything about the franchise. I do have obviously bias, but I will say this. This game is not a perfect game. Halo Infinite is my first choice for game of the year it is but it is not a perfect game there is no perfect game in my opinion anymore there are games that are very close to perfection and like just magical experiences but halo is something that i think that you have to hit it right or else the fans will be upset and this is something that they hit absolutely nail on the head campaign multiplayer gameplay wise phenomenal and the story great what they've done to to basically recover from the disaster of a story that Halo 5 was is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> like Halo 5's story is a disaster. And the fact that they were able to pull the remnants of that into Halo Infinite's campaign, that doesn't ditch any of that, by the way. It doesn't just retcon everything because I think that would be just as disingenuous to retcon everything and say, hey, we're starting over. I I think it's very impressive and, to me, exciting that they were able to craft a story that's both interesting and, and very, you know, uh, respectful for the the franchise's history and in many cases it does very well at you know harping back to those key moments from the history of halo and i absolutely love that campaign it is absolutely phenomenal the gameplay i absolutely love the the open world of that game there are criticisms of it you know the the variety of the open world could be better you know you could have different environments and stuff like that that would be better there's basically gage and i were talking about this the other night there's basically two environments you have the outdoor area and the indoor areas and that's basically the extent of the environments but like it's so well done in terms of what you're doing in those world in the world that it just doesn't even matter for me and uh It's the longest Halo campaign we've ever gotten in terms of, you know, I spent probably, what, 25 hours or so just collecting everything and and doing all the side missions and doing all the main missions. And yes, uh, campaign, phenomenal. Multiplayer, I think they literally did the impossible and they bridged the gap of the old fans and the new fans and made something that that made both people happy, which I said in a video that I did on my personal channel a few years ago, I'm like, if they want the next Halo game to be successful, they have to bridge the two. And they literally did that. I didn't think that it was possible. I thought they were going to have to choose one or the other and basically split the community yet again. But they literally did the impossible and made the gameplay phenomenal and perfect and uh there's so many good additions the equipment makes me so reminiscent of halo 3's uh pickups that they had and halo 3 is my favorite game of all time so that just makes it even better uh and and yes there are issues with multiplayer as there are issues with the campaign the multiplayer microtransactions aren't great the prices are bad they're way too expensive there there's a voice pack on there right now for a a new ai that costs twenty dollars that's way too much yes uh and in there in general the store's prices are, are way too high 
Uh, but obviously, 343 is listening. They're going to continue to make changes. Halo Infinite is a ongoing game. It's only going to get better. Fans are only going to keep telling 343 what we want. They're only going to keep making changes for the better. They're not going to just say, oh, we're done. We're, we're out. We're not changing that. Like, they're going to listen. They're going to make positive changes on this game. And that's what makes me so excited for it. And uh, yeah. Happy, happy to call it my favorite game of the year. Uh, obviously, I know it's not going to be everyone's game of the year, but uh, yeah, that's that's my my two cents. I I would like to add that while I personally don't think Halo Infinite is game of the year worthy, the fact like there's one section of it is, and that's the point that you made where it's like it's not being talked about enough, and I guess it's only that's because the only people that can really understand how much of an achievement it is, is the Halo fans, and the Halo fans are too busy being upset with things that yeah. I personally think they have a right to be upset with. But anyways, the fact that they were able to merge the old style of Halo with the new style of Halo, it is something that is extremely mm. impressive. Like, that like that one aspect of this game is game of the year worthy, absolutely. Because that, I didn't think was possible either. I thought they were going to um either make an old style game that has some new elements or make a new style game that has some old like like you said they ha- i i thought they would have had to draw a line in the sand but yeah. the changes that they made are so brilliant where it's like oh we're keeping sprint in but when you sprint you only move two percent faster than walking so there's no advantage to it and like you said equipment's back and it's multiple use but you still have it still has a limited amount of uses like it's it's they nailed that part of it. So that part, the multiplayer gameplay, I will agree, it is absolutely incredible. And the the gameplay team at three four three deserves all the props in the world because I didn't think it was possible either. It was yeah, that part is absolutely amazing. Plus, they put in the portals, which is the best part of the game. That's true, because like <laughs> they're taking inspiration from of course what inspired Halo in, in the, the beginning, place, which is Splitgate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, how did i know I'll let that joke die in 2022 don't worry yeah i'm sure i'm sure there'll be a... december 31st 2022 yeah <laughs> there'll be a new halo infinite expansion i'll be talking about You'll be like is there portals being added yeah <laughs> there probably will be in forge yeah that's true teleporters oh, wow. te- technically teleporters are sort of portals i guess kind of if that happens i'm in yeah <laughs> christian Jesus. All right, anything else, guys, before we close out the show? Good year for games. Really good year for games. 2022 is going to be even better. Oh, yes. It's going to be packed. Oh, my God. We have, I keep forgetting, not only do we have Elden Ring at the beginning of the year, we have Starfield as well. Yeah. I keep forgetting about that. I, I don't, it may get delayed. It may get delayed, but I have a feeling it's not going to be. And not just because I'm excited for it, because uh, Fall should... 76 really turned me off of Bethesda quite a bit. I think we should start have... a bet on that if it gets delayed or not. I I will go all I will go all in. Wow, how much you got? <laughs> um, actually nothing because my oh. cat eats rocks for fun. All right, well. Um, it was a good it was a good year, and, it's good, and, I, and I'm really excited for for uh, 2022. I've got I've got big hopes for Redfall. I'm very excited. Yeah. Also, sure. I didn't get to talk about my most anticipated game. Spoiler alert: is Redfall. That's I'm, a, I'm really wait, that, Redfall. that's next week. Next next week. Yeah. <laughs> did, you guys are. I already. I watched the episode. You guys already did it, didn't you? Oh, did we do this already? Wait, most <laughs> anticipated. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did. We did, did that we? last week. Wait, did we? Yeah, you guys did. I watched it. That's I'm, true. I'm so I, because confused. Dan said he Dan said he was better than me oh, at Halo. You're right. Dan said he was better than me at Halo, right. and that Rashan yeah. witnessed it firsthand, and Rashan still still hesitated because he knows. I forgot. Because he knows deep in his soul, and I he's for- nodding his head yes right now. Dan, do you see that? Do you he's see what's wrong. happening in the bottom no. right? No, Ro, don't don't pander <laughs> to him at all. You know. <laughs> I forgot next week's predictions. I I forgot the timeline of where we're at. Here. Uh, okay, so can I can I go? Can I quickly say yes, my my yes, Okay. Redfall is number 1. I'm really excited for Redfall. No no gameplay, no hype. Fuck you. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Um I don't know what else is coming out. I don't know. That's I'm really excited for that. That's, this guy. Okay. That's it. 
Right. Dying Light 2, maybe. I, I'm still worried about it, but I'm, I'm interested to see if it turns out to be good or not. Also, Rosario Dawson, yes, please. I didn't know that she was a main character and a playable character. Mm-hmm. They kind of kept that hidden. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Redfall. Redfall. I'm excited. Well, I have just one more thing to say. They fulfilled their promise. Halo Infinite is 343's <laughs> Halo 3, despite what Gabe says. It's not. Thank- <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you to everyone joining us live on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Stitcher. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Gage. I am Daniel, and this has been Podcast PXN, and we are out. Much love, and keep on gaming. Happy New Year, players. Keep on gaming gamers. Expert.